Hey fun fans, our feature team is 148 the Robo Wranglers, and they've hooked us up with an awesome giveaway of a Deep Space Cowboys 148-118 t-shirt. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and comment in any video with your favorite 148 robot. You can enter in any video that has his intro through October 9th, so make sure you comment below. So far on Deep Dive, we've talked to some of the most successful teams in a first. Most recently, we talked to uh, 254, the Cheesy Poofs, 2056, OP Robotics, and 2767, Strike Force. Uh, tonight, we have with us our third 2018 world champion in a row. Uh, <laughs> they were world champions as well in 2008, and they have five Einstein appearances in the last seven seasons. This is 148, the Robo Wranglers. Thanks for being here, guys. And uh, why don't we start with a quick introduction, starting with uh, the students. And if you don't mind, maybe just let us know what grade you're in, what roles you have on the team, and uh, what you're most interested in talking about tonight. Um, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm a senior this year. I've been on the team all four years of high school. Um, last year, I was the roller driver during the competition season. And most of what I'm talking about today is going to be mechanical and design stuff. That's kind of where I thrive during the build season. My name's Emma. I'm also a senior, and this is actually my second year. This year will be my second year on the team. And I do a lot of our media, marketing, and different things like that. And I'll be talking about team dynamics and community outreach. Um, and I'm Adrian Emerson. Uh, I'm the lead teacher on 148, and I'm really excited uh, to talk about scouting and different things uh, about our team culture tonight as well. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, we're going to start out by getting a little get, getting to know a little bit more about Team 148. Uh, later on during the show, we will be asking some questions that were submitted by you, the community, via Discord and Chief Delphi and our social media. And we will also take some questions submitted live in the chat throughout the show. So if you have a question that you would like to ask uh, the Robo Wranglers, uh, post it in the chat or and tag at first updates now. And we will try to ask as many as we have time for tonight. We already have a lot. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, our first question, we're just going to start out with the basics. Uh, how is your guys' team organized as far as uh, personnel, roles on the team, and how the different aspects of the team are covered? Uh, so after kickoff, our team splits into different groups based on the robot subsystems. And each of those subsystems will be led by one student and a mentor to go with them. And the technical subsystems will float at first, so we'll have students moving from one to the other wherever they're needed. And later on in the season, people sort of settle into whatever they're working on, and they really start to pound out that subsystem. Um, aside from the technical groups we have, we do have one marketing group that kind of encompasses the rest of the team responsibilities. So we'll have fundraising, uh, media, a lot of our uh, documentation and our, uh, our judged awards will be under our marketing team. But we do have a saying that's every Wrangler is a riveter. And we try to live by that by getting our entire team involved in the actual construction of the robot, at least somewhat. But all this is centered around our team's three main goals that we have, which are to have fun, uh, make friends, and chase excellence. And every year we try to encourage all of our students to live by those three goals. And that if they're not living by those goals, then there's really, that's the main point of the team. So, yeah, we really try and focus on the first goal, have, have fun. fun. Um, that's probably yeah. the one that we try and uh, and do the most. Um, we hopefully will be showing a lot of our fun, no pun intended, tonight on <laughs> uh, <laughs> the show. All right. Uh, so moving on, uh, how do you guys approach funding for your team? Uh, is it mainly sponsorship or is it fundraising? And, and how do you guys go about doing that? Uh, sure, I'm going to take that question. So we have three uh, major corporate sponsors. Um, Innovation First, which we're actually at today because um, they have the most reliable internet in Greenville, apparently. Um, <laughs> and um, L3, uh, which was recently uh, merged with Harris, so now they're L3 Harris. And um, our uh, school district, Greenville ISD, is is one of our main sponsors as well. So uh, we've had those three uh, sponsors uh, for as long as I've been on the team, uh, which is 10 years. And so they're really kind of the, um, the, the, the base of which most of our team funding comes from. And um, they not only provide monetary support, but they all three of our sponsors provide um, volunteer mentors and, uh, you know, work with us in, in all aspects. So we help them, they help us. 
Um, but uh, our main source of fundraising is typically robotics events. We've actually created, um, uh, we're really proud that we've created kind of a sustainable program through um, hosting robotics events. So we mainly host VEX uh, EDR and VEX IQ events, and we actually use those um, as fundraisers. If you uh, host a lot of them, you can actually use those as a, as a funding opportunity. And that has really um, helped us build what I consider to be uh, one of the most sustainable robotics models um, that I've seen in a school. Um, so not only do these competitions provide us with funding, but they also provide our students and our district a place to compete. And so we not only help sustain our program, but we, always, we also create a pipeline of students for our program. And so that is is really how our program functions uh, at at the core level. Awesome. And uh, moving on to you know internally to your guys' team, uh, how do you guys handle training and educating your students, especially your newer students every season? So as a team, we kind of have a joke of you know everything can be iterated. And for training, training itself is definitely an iterative process. So a big thing that we try and do with our rookies is we try to go to off seasons. So we'll pair rookies with veterans for all the roles on the team. That includes pit, that includes our drive team, marketing, scouting. Everybody kind of gets a little feel for everything that we do on the team. And then also all the students that are on the team are in a robotics class. We're really lucky to have a class period every day. Um, you know, you're either in one or the other. And during the class periods, we work on SolidWorks uh, certifications, equipment training, safety training, team culture, and we go over 148 history. And um, things that we try and teach our rookies are just some simple electronics basics, pneumatics basics, programming, programming basics, and then we're adding on specific equipment training. So we'll train them on the lathes, the routers, the printers, and just different things like that, just to kind of get them acclimated to the you know the environment of our team and the most important thing that miss emerson normally leads us in is the pact yeah so i think tyler had the pact up earlier i can you bring it back again uh if, if you have a second so we at the beginning of every season have a pact and we all say it together <laughs> um, and so we can recite the pact for everybody we are We're all teammates, teammates. We, we all, all have, have the, the same, same goals, goals. We, we succeed, succeed and fail together. together. If I need help, I promise to ask for help. When I grow stronger, the team grows stronger. I will always help my teammates. When they grow stronger, the team grows stronger. No one benefits from pretending they don't need help. I won't pretend. <laughs> So that's a really good way for us to remind uh, all ourselves, not just the rookies. Um, if we don't know how to do something, we have to ask for help. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that we ingrain in the culture of our team. And I think that's what um, helps us onboard our new students um, so successfully. So I think Josh is gonna talk a little bit about some of the other stuff that we do in the preseason, specifically our ex-robot designs. <laughs> So during the pre-seasons of most years, we will build what we call the X projects. And in 2010, it started with a couple of alumni of our team, Parker and Charles, where they saw a popular drive train in the VEX program, and they decided to try it out for the FRC. So up on the screen right now is actually the X1 drive train. And that was the world's first ever butterfly drive that is now design patented by those two students. Uh, we also have, since then we've done what we call like the work mules, which were the X9s. Those ones we used for prototypes and to play defense. And then most recently, or more recently, we have built what is X16 or Bolt. And that one we built to take to the robot remix down in the woodlands. And that one was mainly just for fun. I mean, we'd had a, a tough year and we wanted to go to a competition just for some fun. And so we built that and then in the 2018 off season, we built two robots, the X18 and X19. And the X18 was built as a replacement for the X9s, so just to play defense and test some uh, subsystems on. And the X19 was innovative drive solutions. So we tried to use as light of components as we could and as, uh, as uh, 
effective components as we could. So we used a lot of uh, 3D printed parts and we made it in, insanely small. And so on that, we had 3D printed bearing blocks, 3D printed corner brackets, 3D printed gearboxes. And uh, a good friend of mine, Corbin, actually worked on that a lot with our lead mentor, John V. Noon. Can you guys talk about maybe anything you guys are working on this off season at all, or is it a uh, top secret for now? What are we working on this off season? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're a little behind. Um, <laughs> so we've uh, we've talked about um, actually going to remix again and building another like small, uh, maybe a swerve drive. We haven't really decided yet, but we're a little behind uh, just in general <laughs> this off season. So who knows? You haven't done too much yet. <laughs> is your is your guys' off season primarily like in the fall once the school year starts, or do you guys are are you guys doing stuff during the summer as well? Uh, really, we focus a lot uh, in the fall. Uh, this summer, we kind of reorganized our shop. So it was just kind of, we had been in it for three years and we kind of just, we got some new equipment we needed to rearrange things. So we spent a lot of time doing that this summer. But in terms of real like engineering projects, we typically wait until um, school starts to get back into those just because we try and all have a life during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work, but. A life? An FRC? Yeah. What? It's crazy. Uh, never works <laughs> <laughs> all right so moving on to our next question uh what kinds of things do you guys do both during the season and also in the off season to help other teams as well as your community overall and how do these improve your own team and your own students so as a team we work really hard to help other teams during the season and during off season as well as our community and how we help other teams in the off season are many different ways one of them is sheet metal giveaway and sheet metal giveaway is when we come to a time of year where we have just a bunch of extra parts that we're not quite sure what to do with. So teams have the opportunity to email us and then pay for the shipping of different parts that we have. So they can kind of get a feel for our engineering, not only just from the CAD, but by having a tangible piece of equipment that they can kind of look at and see what they want to do with. Also, we have our resource release, which is pretty um, fairly known throughout the community. But we release those at the end of the year, as long as our award submissions all on the website, just so other teams can kind of get an idea of kind of what we're doing. Um, then how we help other teams during the season is the very infamous JVN blog. And um, this is just kind of a way for other teams to get an idea of what's going on with us during the season and just kind of get an idea of what not only is going through our head mentor's mind, but our minds as a team, just kind of how we're processing what we're doing and just kind of to give the community an idea of what we're what, what's going on. So also we do scrimmage days and we're one of the only teams in the area around us that have a full functioning field. And so that's really helpful to the teams around us so they can come out and scrimmage with us and have a full field to actually work with and have another team to replicate a game. Then um, also this year was the first year we did this, but hosting a district. So this year we're looking forward to doing that. It was a really cool thing for us and it was just kind of a way for us to help out first in Texas of our area. Next um, is how we help the community in the off season. So we have an, we're lucky enough to have robotics programs at each of our elementary schools and we do career days at most of these schools. So we take a day and a couple of our students and we go out and just talk to the kids and show them what you know what we do and how they can become an engineer or a robo wrangler themselves one day and we also help out the elementary school teams through design challenges and just kind of the things that they're doing with their robotics programs just kind of help them and guide them through that and it's it's one of my favorite things is helping out the little kids i, I love it anyway <laughs> i think it's showing you a video now it's it's so adorable i love it but um, also we do the toy drive out at L3 Harris and that's many programs at our school actually do that. And it's just, it's a really big thing within our community that's known and it's just basically a massive toy drive that we all put time toward and do that. Next we host VEX events and this year we're actually hosting a Texas Combat Robotics event and we're really excited about that. Yeah. Um, but the VEX events, if we didn't really have that living in a rural community, a lot of the teams that attend our events wouldn't be able to uh, compete in VEX just because it's hard to get to those, um, the areas where they do host events. Then during the season we help our community, we do um, a robotics open house 
and that's right before things kind of get crazy for us just to kind of give the community an idea about what we're going to be doing and just what we have been doing for the past couple of weeks. Um, next, hosting the robotics events. This helps bring people and money to the city and um, just kind of gives people more of an idea of what we're doing and what we're about. And overall, through all these different things, it helps improve our team because we get to interact with not only the FRC community, but our community itself. And by hosting these events, we get to know the event volunteers and we get to kind of help support our First in Texas community. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.